The graphs of G with the first derivative. Okay, so that's going to be quite interesting. So that's the first derivative of some other graph called G. And H are sketched below. The graph of G is the derivative graph of a cubic function. Yes, of course. If you have a cubic function and you then take the first derivative, you end up with this, okay? The graphs of H and G have a common y-intercept at point E. C and D are the x-intercepts. Point A is the x-intercept. Line AB is parallel. Okay, so first question, write down the coordinates of point E. So that'll be easy because you can just use this equation over here and you just need to go find its y-intercept and you can do that by just making x equal to zero and that'll give us negative four. So the coordinates of E would be zero and negative four. Now it says determine the equation of this graph. Okay, so we know that it's a parabola and in grade 11 we learned two ways to find the equation of a parabola. Either they've given you the turning point, then you would use this equation, or they've given you the two x-intercepts and then you would use this equation. So we can see that they've given us the two x-intercepts. So we're going to say um, y equals to a x minus 6 x minus minus 2. So that becomes x minus 6 x plus 2. Now for a you need another point. So we can use this point e which is 0 and negative 4. So the negative 4 is the y, the x is 0. Okay, and so negative 4 is equal to a. Now just put these two brackets together. You don't have to multiply them out. Just say negative 6 multiplied by 2, which is negative 12. Then to get a alone, you're going to divide my, by negative 12, and you're going to get 1 over 3 as your a value. Some of you might say a is 3, but then you're just doing it the wrong way around. Okay, so we have a. Um, so now what we're going to go and do, and notice that a lot of learners are not comfortable with this uh, in grade 12 where they have this parabola that has the, it's the first derivative. But notice that we haven't had to use that yet, and we've already got 1 plus 4, we've already got 5 marks out of a total of 10 for this question. We already have 50%. So you don't have to stress when you see that and think, oh no, I don't know how to use that, because a lot of learners don't. But we haven't had to use that yet, and we already have five out of 10. Okay, so let's quickly go say a third, x minus six, x plus two. So now um, let's leave the one over three there, and then let's multiply this bracket out. So that's gonna become negative four x, because it's plus two, minus six, you can do it in different steps if you want, minus 12. Then we're gonna multiply the one over three into the bracket, minus four. So I just multiplied that third into each of those three things. Now this next one you need to pay careful attention to. It says, write down the x-coordinate of the turning point of G. They're not talking about this graph. A lot of you are gonna say, oh, there's the turning point. Or you're gonna go work out the turning point um, from this equation, not correct at all. They're not saying, remember that this graph here is g of x with the first derivative. You see it even says it there. But they're asking specifically about g, which is the original graph. So think about this. How do we normally find turning points? That is normally when the first derivative is equal to zero. So here we have the graph of the first derivative. This is the graph. So where is it equal to zero? It is equal to zero over there, and it is equal to zero over there. It's not the turning point of this graph that we're looking at. So it is equal to zero over there, and so you would say x equals to negative two, or x equals 6. This question says, write down the x-coordinate of the point of inflection of the graph of G. Okay, so we know that to normally find an inflection point, we need the second derivative, and we want that to be 0. So because we have this equation, remember this is our first derivative. Um, this is actually our first derivative. 
then all we need to do to go from our first derivative to our second derivative is just take the derivative of this once. And so to take that, remember that this number here is gonna to multiply to the front, that's gonna be two over three, x to the one, minus, then this part here just becomes four over three, and then this part falls away completely. Now we're gonna make that equal to zero because that is how we find um, inflection points. Now, because we have a common denominator of three and we have an equation, we can actually ignore that. So we can actually just say two x minus four. And then however you wanna solve this, you should eventually find out that x is two, x is two. With this last question, it says explain why g, so g is the original cubic graph, g is not this graph over here, okay? Explain why it has a local maximum at x equals minus two. So don't worry too much about the word local, but why does it have a maximum? So remember a maximum is a graph that does this, and then a minimum is a graph that does this. Now remember, you mustn't look at the shape of this graph because then you're gonna say, oh, it's a minimum. But remember, this is not the graph of G. This is the graph of G or first derivative. So they're saying at x equals to minus two. So what I want you to look at is when you go, when x is smaller than minus two, look at these y values, they're positive, right? So we can say that when x is smaller than minus two, we know that that graph is positive. We can see it's got positive y values. But what does this actually mean? What does the first derivative mean? What have I told you guys the first derivative actually means? It's another name for the gradient. So therefore, when x is smaller than minus two, the gradient of the original graph is bigger than zero. Then, when x is bigger than minus two, so when x is here, then we can see this graph becomes negative. Then we can say that g of x becomes negative. Therefore, we can say the gradient of the original becomes negative. So when you are at this point minus two, we are going from a positive gradient, which looks like this, to a negative gradient, which looks like that. So it means that at the point minus two, we must be having a turning point. So let me rather show this a bit better. So on the left-hand side, we've got a positive gradient. And on the right-hand side, we would have a negative gradient. And so it must be a turning point maximum over there because the gradient is switching from positive to negative. And so therefore, uh, G is a local maximum when X is minus two. If you wanted to understand this a bit further, if you wanted to, so that's the end of that question, but for those of you that are more interested, if you look at this part of a year, we would see the exact opposite. On the left-hand side, we could see that the, the G of X is negative which would mean the gradient of the original graph is negative. Even though the gradient here is positive, we're not looking at the shape of this graph. And then on the right-hand side, so we could say here on the left-hand side, sorry, that the gradient is negative, or the, the, the graph is negative, which means it's, remember that this represents the gradient of the original. And then on the right-hand side, we can see that this is now becoming positive. It's got positive Y values but the, this here represents the gradient. So the gradient is negative over here, ne negative over here, and then positive over here. So that would be a minimum, because you're going from a negative gradient to a positive gradient. So this is where you would have a minimum on that graph, and this is where you would have the local maximum on the graph, on the original graph of G.